Bay. The saga of the great Hudson's Bay Fur Company. And of the brave men who traveled the untrekked wilderness from Labrador to California, from Minnesota to Alaska. Starring Barry Nelson as Jonathan Banner, Hudson's Bay Man. With George Tobias as Pierre Falcone. Who should I have sent for? One of the head office greenhorns, some bright young man who, who'd have found a legal technicality to get the prisoner off? Look, you know Indians, you know how they think. An eye for an eye. You saw them out there. Four tribes and more on the way. We're one small fort. We wouldn't stand a chance against. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but you picked the wrong man. Maybe your hearing ain't so good. My hearing's fine. Or maybe your brain ain't working so good. Maybe. You'd say one and sacrifice a hundred? If that one was innocent. But that one isn't innocent. The prisoner has confessed the killing. Well, what are you so worried about it for, then? I'm afraid of a technicality. Are you afraid of the law? Oh, the law's fine. But the Indians do not respect our law. You and me, Factor. You and me. We have to. Jonathan, it's easy for you. This isn't your home. These aren't your friends and relatives. You didn't come here when there was nothing but bugs and, and, and fever and hostiles. You haven't put every dream you ever had into this place. It's easy for you to be the, the big idealist. I'd like to see the prisoner now, if you don't mind. Suit yourself. You can make arrangements for the trial in about an hour or so. Just as you say. But it's only fair that I point out one thing. That rope outside. That could be very easily made into a lynch rope if necessary. That thought had occurred to me. Just so long as it has. Shall we? What's happening, Factor? Trial will be starting soon. And I go tell a good citizen. Better take a good look, Jonathan. Just to make sure what you're up against. What do you feed him on? Raw meat? He don't drink tea, that's for sure. Jail's over here. I'll let you in. I think I'll stay here, Johnny. I don't like killers. You too, Pierre? Me too. What? Nothing. Are you the hangman? Are you the prisoner? You answer my question, and I'll answer yours. Well, I'm not the hangman, if I can help it. Well, I'm the prisoner, and I can't help it. Well, I didn't expect a lady. What makes you think you found one? What makes you think different? Haven't they told you about me? You tell me. Oh, no. They can do a much better job. What are you doing around here, anyway? I was just passing through on my way to... nowhere. What are you selling? My name is Banner, Jonathan Banner. Your nickname's not by any chance Honest John. Uh, not quite. That's too bad. I could use an Honest John about this time. I'm with the Hudson's Bay Company, and... Uh... That doesn't impress me. So is the factor here. He's a scared man. Aren't all men? Maybe, maybe not. So you're the maybe type, are you? Maybe. I'll say this for you, John Banner. You're making my last hours happy ones. They may not be your last hours. There's going to be a trial. With a jury? 
maybe. That's what I like about the maybe types. They don't give you much hope. Well, you're going to have an honest trial, huh? Guarantee you that. Have you met any of the good citizens around here? I have. Well, if you want to withdraw your last statement, you may. It'll be honest. Over your dead body? Maybe. You know something? I think the maybes have it. I'm afraid it's going to be rough, though. I never met a man without a price. What's yours? Not what you're thinking. What am I thinking? You never met a man without a price. So? It is honest, John, after all. I better be going. There are things to do. Honest, John. Don't make it over your dead body. It'll be such a waste. about you in there, Johnny. Not a scratch on me. The killer, is he tough? He is a she. He is a she? Johnny, do you think that the he who is a she is guilty? We'll find out. If we leave. I think you better wait around here and let me know what happens. I'll do that, Johnny. But if you come out and I am not here, just look up there. Banner, what do you think of our prisoner? She seems all right. All right? Is that what you call a girl who runs off to marry with Indians? Does that make her any less of a lady? Well, you know what she is, don't you? No. You tell me. Well. She's been around here for over a month. Ask any of the men. All right, I'll ask you. What is she? Don't look at me like that, Banner. You said ask any of the men. Aren't you a man? Well, look, I, I'm not going to stand here and play games with you, Banner. A person's life is not a game. I asked you a question, and I want an answer. Now, what is she? Until she ran off with that Indian and killed him, she kept pretty much to herself. As a matter of fact, I've, I've never known a girl who worked quite as hard. She took up sewing. Pretty good at it, too. But she told one of the ladies that she'd been a dance hall girl back east. I suppose we, uh, well, we kind of confused what she is with what she was. You know, it would have been much easier to string a rope around her neck, thinking of her as nothing but a, a cheap dance hall girl. Banner, what am I going to do? You're going to help me conduct an honest trial. What if she's guilty? Then I'll help you swing the rope. And suppose she's innocent. Well, we'll deal with the Indians the best way we can. Well, I can't speak for the folks out there. Can you speak for yourself? I sure can. I'll have to do it. they're going to insist on a jury trial. That's their right. You can count on me, but uh, I don't know how honest they're going to be. You let me worry about that. Will you go and get the girl for me? Yeah. All right, I'll go and get them. Jonathan, hmm. if I don't talk to you alone before it starts, I want to wish you a lot of luck.
But I'm afraid you're going to need more than luck if you're going to get an honest trial. Honest John, the working girl's friend. Charles is nearly ready to start. What's the hurry? Nearly sundown. You know, it's funny. I, I never thought about it before, but that sun up there travels too darn fast across the sky. Yeah. Honest John? Yeah. Do I have any kind of a chance? If you tell the truth. Do you think that's going to matter? I think so. In this town? Better get going. What were you doing about 15 years ago? Hmm? I said, what were you doing about 15 years ago? Hmm. Working with the company. Were you in Montreal that year? No, I wasn't. That's too bad. I'd like for you to have met me then. I had a wonderful eighth birthday party that year. And my mother bought me a, a pretty white dress. I'd like you to have seen me in it. Funny about that dress. When I first saw it, I cried. I remember I told my mother I wanted a, a big lady's dress, not a little girl's dress. I remember what she said. A big lady's dress can never look as pretty or as clean as a little girl. I guess my mother was right. Bring it going up. It's getting late. Let's get on with it. All right, good citizens, sit down. You got to pick a jury. Go, so, Pete, sit down. All right, there's your jury. Now, before we start, I have to appoint somebody to represent the defendant. Johnny, I'll take the job. What do I do? When I tell you, why you just take the defendant to the stand. All right. Now, under the authority of the Hudson's Bay Company and the government of Canada, I hereby declare this court in order. The defendant is charged with the murder of White Buffalo, son of Big Elk, chief of the Chippewa tribe. Will the defendants please take the stand? All right, Pierre, that's you. Huh? Oh, yeah. Huh. Uh, this way, please. Wait a minute. Why waste time? Let the jury vote right now. Mr. Pearson, I think it only fair to warn you that this is not a legal trial unless we hear the evidence. He's right, Pearson. It's getting late. We know what she has to say. Or she lets vote. Anger. Mr. Pearson, you better sit down. You've had your game, Banner. This is no game. Let's take her out right now. How am I going to represent her if they take her away? All right. Now, I'm going to ask you just once more. Everybody, sit down. You'll hear the evidence, and then when it's over, you'll take a vote. The defendant will now be sworn in. Will you raise your right hand and swear to tell the truth? The truth? Who wants to hear the truth? Look at them sitting out there. We're wasting our time on this, John. They want their hanging. Why don't you let them have it? You want me to lose this case? I never had a case in court before. I swear. 
swear to tell the truth. How did you learn to do these, Johnny? How does the defendant plead, Counselor? Uh, uh, is that me? Yeah, that's you. Uh, I'll ask out. <laughs> this is better than the family show I saw in Montreal. You see? The defendant pleads guilty. But what are we waiting for? Don't press me, Pearson. It's not for the defendant to decide, but you, the jury. And that's not going to happen until you hear her out. Isn't that a waste of time? I'll tell you about a waste of time. Men give their lives for the right to tell the truth. and You make that a waste of time. But they won't even listen. Doesn't matter what they do. All that matters is what you do. When I came here, I had high hopes. For the first few days, everybody was very nice to me. Even Mr. Pearson. I remember you saying something that ended in ma'am. I tried to be like you ladies. Clean, respectable. I even took up sewing. I'm going to tell you the truth. Sewing bores me. Everything was going very well until... until I told you, Mrs. Brown, about that dance hall I worked at in Montreal. <laughs> Didn't take very long for it to get around, and... soon... Mr. Pearson wasn't calling me ma'am anymore. And then I met White Buffalo. I'd never met a real Indian before. He was very polite. Treated me like a lady. He made me feel that he cared just a little. When he asked me to go back to his camp and, and be his squaw, I was flattered. <laughs> Then I went to his camp, and I found out White Buffalo had many squaws. When I told him that I, I had to leave, he, he laughed at me, and he said I'd get used to it. I told him that I, I never could. And when I tried to leave, he said that I could never leave. And I, I started to walk away. He came after me. And then it happened. The next thing I knew, I had his knife in my hand. White Buffalo was dead. And then I came back here. up the trading post, distribute whatever powder and lead we have. Yeah, I think that'd be a good idea. You want to come along? Honest, John? Yeah. Thanks. Johnny, where are you going? To where the Indians are camping. You feel all right? 
Say it, dear. Wait. I go with you. No, I think you better stay here. They're going to need every man they can get if I'm not successful. Uh, Johnny. Yeah? I want you to know something. If I never see you again, you have one fine man with you. must die. She killed my son. Do you know why she killed him? She did not like him. She would not stay here and be his squaw. That is not right. She loved your son very much. Love? Yes, she wanted to be his squaw and bear him children and keep his lodge. But why she kill him? Because she did not want to share him with other squaws. But that is our way. But it is not our way. It's very hard for a white woman to get used to. What do you want me to do? I want you to go to Big Elk and stop the war. I am no longer a favorite squaw, but was first many moons ago. There will be no war between your people and my people. That is good. You have squaw? No. No, I haven't. When you take squaw, you would be happy with just one. Yes, I think uh, one would be quite enough. That is good. I think I'd better go now and thank you. Banner, you smart man. You become big chief one day. <laughs> 